Hi everyone, so in this tutorial I'm going to take you through a step-by-step -step process on how to draw light fur in pastels. Now the reason why I've taken a section of this is because it's quite a complex fur texture to get accurate. But if you would like me to create a full tutorial of this from start to finish and upload it here to YouTube, then do let me know in the comments below because I'm more than happy to do that as well. Now my first step is to map in some kind of base layer. Now if you've seen my other tutorials here on YouTube, you'll know that I put a lot of focus and emphasis on that base layer stage. It's our foundation for our details, so I do like to get it as accurate as I can. Now you can also see from the fur texture on the left hand side of the face that there are lots of sections of this fur that are overlapping. So when it comes to this tutorial here and how I focus on this type of fur texture, the layering order and the way that I do those layers in each of those stages is really important. I don't want to be adding details or clumps of fur too early on when I haven't got the layer underneath it finished and done because what then happens is we'll have to draw around those details that we've overlapped on top and that makes the process longer and far more complex. Now with this base layer stage, just like with any animal that I'm drawing, you'll notice that I'm not putting one solid colour down for the entire section. Now I like to do this with any subject because I do feel that I'm more likely to follow that reference photo accurately early on. So if I here am indicating at my main lights and darks and I'm also indicating at my fur direction, I feel that this is more likely that I'm going to be able to then get my portrait looking more realistic and I also spend less time hesitating because I can look back at my reference photo, back at my drawing and know exactly which section of the fur that I should be working on because I've already taken the time to map in my shapes. Okay, so the next stage here is I'm going to be using my pastel pencils and I'm going to start to refine some of the colour but also my values. Now the values are how light or how dark that section needs to be. So here I'm starting to reinforce my shadows so that I am starting to get a bit more of that face shape and structure in place. Now I talk about this in all of my tutorials but especially on my in-depth tutorials on Patreon. Often they're all recorded in real time with a voiceover while I'm drawing so that I can explain every single process. And as I say, one thing there that I do mention very, very often is the values. If we put our shadows and highlights in a slightly different position compared to what we see in the reference photo, that will adjust what that animal looks like. Because the shadows and the highlights are being determined in their placement by that skull and the way that the muscles, skin and fur are then sitting on top. So it's really important to make sure that we are studying that photo closely. I have a video here on YouTube and it's my top tips for drawing realistic fur in pastels. I'll link that in the description below if it's of interest. Now there I speak about a few things but one of those is fur direction, fur length and fur thickness. Now again, this is something that I do go in depth in my Patreon tutorials because this is something that is going to really affect what our finished portrait looks like. The direction of those pencil strokes, as you can see here, as I'm starting to curve over the top of the eye, this has to follow the right shape and curve in order to get that face structure accurate. So as well as our lights and our darks and how we've got those placed, the fur direction is just as important. I want to make sure that I've got that fur direction accurate because here it's curving over that eye socket and then where it's going to start sloping down the side of the skull where the ear then attaches to the head. So these again just like the highlights and shadows they're not random. The way that the fur is directing is happening for a reason. Now when you're starting to work with longer coated dogs like this labradoodle here it is one of the things where there's going to be a little bit more freedom of movement because their coat is naturally longer. So shorter coated breeds, you're going to have potentially a little bit more of a structured fur direction. But with this, when it gets to a certain point in that length, it will curve over and overlap in different directions. But because of what I've mentioned earlier, we have to be drawing what is beneath those sections of fur first. 
So this section of fur here is a prime example. Look at how I'm going to start to now curve this over the section of fur above the eye. I can only add in these little lighter details now, there, applying that longer pencil stroke, because I have mapped in the fur beneath it. Although this longer overlapping section of fur jumps out first to me when I looked at the reference photo, there would have been no good in me adding it in early on because I would have had to have drawn in between those details. That just really is a real headache. It makes the process so much more challenging. So I want to get into the habit of ignoring all of those hairs, those clumps of fur that are overlapping on those top layers. Save those until the end. Now here you can see that although I blocked in my base layer for the entire top section of the head on the right hand side, I then stripped it back into small sections. This is quite a complex fur texture, so if there's any stage where I feel like I might get overwhelmed by that, I will break it up into one or two square inches. I don't focus on the entire section because that is one of the ways where we sit there hesitating, thinking which bit should I do first. So if ever you do feel like that, my biggest recommendation, my biggest tip is break that up into much smaller sections. So before we move on to building up more depth and details, if the tips and techniques that I've shared in this video so far have been useful, I would really appreciate it if you could give the video a like and a thumbs up because it makes a huge difference to my channel. I'd be very, very grateful. And as I've mentioned, I do have lots of in-depth tutorials, all with a step-by-step -step voiceover on my Patreon channel. I've got a huge variety of subjects there, and my Patreon tutorials, as well as lots of wildlife subjects, I focus heavily on the pet portrait side of things. So there's a range of dog breeds, cats, horses, different fur textures and colours. For anybody who might want to start looking at doing pet portrait commissions themselves, um, I really do try to make sure there's something for everybody. Now if you've got any questions, anything art related, feel free to pop them in the comments below as well because I'm more than happy to help if I can. So as I now move on to the fur on the top of the head, the one thing that's now really obvious here is the length of those pencil strokes. Now I did briefly mention that earlier on in this tutorial, but here you can really see how important it is to either shorten or lengthen the pencil strokes depending on the area that we're working on. Now everything that I have mentioned so far in this tutorial has only been possible because I've got my contrasts right. Now again, this is something that I talk about in every single tutorial because it is so important. If the base layer isn't dark enough, these lighter details, especially with a coat type and coat colour like this, they will not show up. We won't be able to capture the right amount of depth or realism. Now with this sort of fur texture and this colouring, it's very easy to go to light. What happens then is those highlights won't look as bright because they don't have a dark enough base layer in order to almost bounce off from. We want to make it look like the light is going through the different stages and layers of the fur. So my biggest tip with anything, any drawing, any painting, with any medium, is make sure that you've got good contrast. So if with any portrait you feel that your details are not visible, they're not showing up enough, but you feel like you're using the brighter pencil that should be working, it's probably because your base layers aren't dark enough. By darkening them up, go back using that lighter pencil and that should resolve that issue. Now with all that in mind, for me as well, one of the other biggest things, and I've shown that on every tutorial that I upload to YouTube, is the layering process. I don't feel that I can put in two layers and jump straight into the details that are sitting on the very top of that fur because I just feel that limits massively the amount of depth and realism that is achieved in portraits. So I do like to add multiple layers, not too many, you know, not for the sake of adding them, but I do want to make sure that I'm adding the right amount and that I am doing it in the correct order. And as I say, because I do feel that this is so important, it's something that I focus in depth in every single one of my Patreon tutorials. Now in terms of how Patreon works, you can stay for as long as you want or you can cancel at any time. It's a really flexible way of learning and it's one of the main reasons why I love it so much. I have tutorials in pastels, acrylics and graphite over there so you can pick which tier you would like to be part of. 
So I really hope that this tutorial was useful. I upload two to three videos every week to YouTube, so if you would like to get notified of that content, then hit the subscribe and the bell button. As I mentioned earlier, if this was helpful, I would really appreciate it if you could give a like and a thumbs up, it really does help. Now I'm gonna be uploading another video to YouTube next week, um, but as always, thank you so much for watching.